Welcome to part two of this uh, radical substitution, free radical substitution. That's it right here. Free radical substitution. Now, I explained fully, uh, pretty much fully, the concept of it. You know, the three steps of initiation, uh, propagation, termination. But in this video, I wanted to cover some more complex reaction mechanisms for for free radical substitution. And these are purely just involving alkanes and the halogens, chlorine and bromine, obviously. So consider the reaction, consider the chlorination, I believe that's how you say chlorination of of butane. Chlorination of butane. Yeah. So we know that part one of the reaction is going to be the initiation. And in this initiation reaction, because we know we're using chlorine, we're going to have our Cl2. This is going to, by the process of UV light, the UV radiation, Form our two chlorine radicals. Perfect. Now, in step two, we have got the propagation, which is, as we know, butane as C4H10, which is the main part of the reaction where we form the, the intermediate, we form the butyl. Is that how you say it? Butyl? I should probably know that. Uh, radical. So at first, it's going to react with our chlorine, one of our chlorine radicals here, to form the butyl, butyl, butyl. We'll, we'll call it butyl, butyl, uh, and hydrochloric acid and hydrogen chloride. Fine. That's that's part one of the propagation. Part two, we're going to have our. I would say butyl uh, intermediate our uh, radical here, and we're going to react it with another chlorine. It's going to bump into another chlorine, and here we're going to actually form our desired product of chlorobutane, C4H9Cl, and the product. The second product of this reaction is obviously going to be our remaining chlorine radical. Now, all reactions must have an end. Um, we talked about this previously, where it's very random in which the product is going to be formed. For example, this chlorine radical could quite simply react with with another chlorine rad radical and form this uh, chlorine molecule again. I, I mean, in, instead we could have this butyl um, radical, and it could react with another butyl and quite literally form octane. So this is quite random, but um, that is all covered in in the termination. So there are obviously three steps to termination. We have, in my opinion, the first step, which is we have our two chlorine radicals and they they join back together, per se. They react together and we form our chlorine monoc. Part two, we obviously have our, our two butyl. butyl. I, I, I'm really not comfortable saying butyl or butyl. I can't even remember the other thing I said. Okay, so our other butyl radical, C4H9. And this is, as I said previously, going to form our octane, which is pretty cool. But we can form octane from this, but it is as per expected. And part, part four, apparently, part three of this reaction, we're, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna form our desired product. We're gonna form our desired product of C4H9, our butyl radical, our intermediate per se, and our chlorine radical to form our by intermediate. I mean. I just want to clarify, I mean a positive, um, 
because we, we know this is positive, right? This is going to be positive. So I mean our sort of positive radical, uh, positive uh, molecule with unpaired electrons, per se. Uh, I'm just going to identify that as an intermediate from now on, and this chlorine as the, as the radical. But, uh, yeah. And obviously we're going to form our desired product, C4H9Cl. Perfect. And this is... This is the reaction mechanism for the free radical substitution, free radical substitution, the chlorination of butane to form, to form uh, chlorobutane. Right, cool, cool. What about, what about, what about the bromination I believe that's how you say it bromination bromination of of hexane to form bromo hexane obviously uh, I'm not counting positions here because of the reaction mechanism that I'm using but let's just assume one bromo Hexane, I mean, it really doesn't matter in this context. So, our step one, our initiation, is going to be very similar. It's going to be very similar in the fact that we're going to start off with our BR2 and under UV light or high temperatures, over, generally over about 300 degrees Celsius. Um, we're going to form our two bromine radicals. Uh, remember this little dot here means uh, bromine radical. You can also draw this, as I, I, I covered previously, using sort of arrow, curly arrow mechanism, half arrows to represent the, the flow of one electron, the movement of one electron. This is obviously homolytic fission. And again, just sort of forming our two bromine radicals. Now for part two, propagation of this reaction. Obviously you're gonna have hexane. Now hexane, as we know, is gonna have the formula C6H14. And we're gonna react this with one of our bromine radicals to form our intermediate, which is our C6H14. For our little dot there. And see, we, we typically don't tend to write charges in this. So for bromine, it's not going to be a minus, and for this intermediate, it's not going to be a plus. And we've also formed our hydrogen bromide. Brom now for step two, this intermediate, remember, reacts with a separate molecule of bromine, Br2. And this would undergo homolytic fission, and so forth. And we would produce our desired product, C6H4H. Oh, my mistake. I have not. Subtracted a hydrogen. H13, H13, and this should be C6H13Br plus our other bromine radical. Cool. But, as we all know, this is not the end of the reaction. Did I draw some green previously? I did. Cool. So, this is not the end of our reaction. There is termination. There is a termination, and step one of the termination, I always like to draw the reformation of the bromine molecule, which is obviously just going to be our two our two bromine uh, radicals colliding, reacting back together to form a bromine molecule. Step two, well, this is going to be interesting because we're actually going to form decade, uh, dodecane, so add another God, I haven't even had our, our other intermediate. We won't say hexyl, because that just sounds wrong, in my opinion. I mean, I, I think it's commonly known as that, but uh, we won't call it that. I've done 14 again. That's embarrassing. Right. 13. 13. This will form our C12. H26. And part 3 of the termination is the part we actually want. It's the part we actually want. And here we've got 
C6H13 plus we've got our intermediate plus our bromine that our bromine radical to form our bromohexane. So just hopefully you can clearly understand this. I'm just gonna focus on this dodecane here. Yeah why this is formed because remember it's not just one molecule of hexane in this reaction there's multiple multiple molecules and there's multiple multiple molecules of bromine bromine and these are all the termination represents all the different possible outcomes of the reaction it's basically to show you know there's not going to be a hundred percent Percentage of there's not going to be a hundred percent atom economy here, yeah. so it's it's to show the different products of this reaction that could form because of how reactive the radical is, how just random it will just collide into something. I mean, it's not just gonna it's not gonna be like, oh, we know you want to form bromohexane, so we're just gonna collide with the with the intermediate here, which is C6H13. It's not going to be like that. Right, so we're just going to consider one more reaction. One more reaction. And we're going to go for the bromination. I, I still don't know if I'm saying that right. Bromination of. Hmm. Of. Of. Okay. To form. Bromo. Okay, obviously. Now I want you to see if you can pause the video here and actually give this a go yourself. See if you can do this one yourself. And then unpause and see how well you've done. So step one. Remember, initiation, step one. We have the formation of our bromine radicals. Two bromine radicals, obviously, and don't forget the UV light. Now, step two. Step two involves the two steps in propagation. Step one, we have the decane, which remember is C10H22, and this is going to add to one of the bromine radicals. This bromine is going to is going to force the hydrogen out of out of the decane here, as I showed you previously. But we, you know, we could show it again. We could show it again up here. Imagine, imagine this long chain, and then we've got we've got C. We've got the ending part here. The bromine is going to react with this this hydrogen here. So what's actually happening is we're just heterolytic fission here. So we have obviously. Um, electrons going uh, away from chlorine, remember, because it forms positive, and we also have um, this coming with bromine here to form our obviously, obviously our radical, our intermediate, sorry, draw a little plus there, add HBr. So that's essentially what's happening in this step. And um, so we're left with our intermediate of decil. Decil. It just doesn't sound. It doesn't sound right. I think I'm just saying it wrong. Twenty-one hydrogens. Remember, we minus the one. Add our hydrogen bromide. Now step two. Going to have the intermediate. Well done if you're getting this right so far. This can be quite complicated to learn from the start. From just starting to learn it, but uh. Hopefully I'm explaining it well enough for you to sort of get the grips on this. Add, and remember it's a new molecule of bromine here. And those two will react to actually create our desired product. 21 Br, and don't forget our lonely bromine radical here. Now, step. Step three, termination. Remember, this does not involve 
yield. There's no 100% yield in this. The radicals are very reactive. You know, the bromine could, the bromine could collide. Br, two Br, form Br two. It could form the bromine radical, the bromine molecule again. Or we could get our t two intermediates react to form a, a longer chain uh, alkane. So C C twenty. H forty two. Um yep. And obviously our desired product. Um the reaction that we want. Our intermediate. Our bromine radical to form our bromine decade. C ten H twenty one. Perfect. So I hope I've made this more understandable for you guys. Um, again, I would recommend watching the previous video first before watching this one. It explains it fully from the start, you know, through homolytic fission. That would you'd find that in an introduction to reaction mechanisms, and then watch part one of this video. This is part two, explaining more of the complex side of things. Um, and if you've managed to follow along and understand everything, I think that's that's very good because this can come off quite complex to some students first starting off chemistry. So thanks for watching and make sure to check out some of our other videos.